What is up guys, welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and today I've got a hands on with a case I've been looking at for quite some time now, Thermaltake's Core V21. If you'd like me to do a build in this case do let me know in the comments section below and make sure to smash that like button, I've got some very very cool content coming at your faces, not literally that might hurt, very very soon indeed. But without any further ado, let's jump straight into the review. Wow, that really rhymed. The first thing that really hit me with this case was the sides. Whilst not super tall, it's ridiculously wide and supports all manners of radiators and fans, somewhat unique to this case's otherwise small form factor. The front features a relatively plain panel with circular airflow cutouts, great for the huge 200mm intake fan. There is a foam mesh behind this which acts as both a dust filter and a sound dampening and whilst it seems very functional, it's a massive pain in the ass to clean. There is of course a Thermaltake logo on the front panel, uh, directly in the middle, and that is able to be moved, to the rotated so to speak, uh, using magnets to support different case orientations, which is a great touch. The case has got three side panels, so to speak, uh, with one window one included. The window panel can be moved to support a wide range of aesthetics, want to look down on the GPU from the top, switch the panels around, want to see it from the side, the choice really is yours. The other two side panels are vented uh, with magnetic removable dust filters, the kind of which I absolutely love. This case actually comes included with these modular rails for mounting fans on these panel intakes, 120 or 140 fans and radiators supported, and it's really great to see and super useful. The I.O. on this case is located on the side and actually disconnected from the front panel. Coolly, you can switch the I.O. Uh, to the other side if you wish with just a couple of screws, which is a super cool feature. The I.O. is simple yet functional with a power button, a grossly oversized reset button, headphone and mic jacks, and two USB 3.0 ports. Another two USB ports of the two or three variety would certainly be nice here, but I can't moan too much. The inside of the case is actually separated into two separate levels, a motherboard tray for your motherboard, graphics card, RAM, CPU and cooler, etc. and a bottom section for storage, drives and power supplies. This does cause the case to be a little bit larger than other MATX typical chassis, but gives good drive mounting flexibility. You can mount up to three 3.5 three inch and another three 2.5 inch drives, or use their hard drive slots for up to six SSDs total. It's really good to see this case being generous on the SSD front particularly, and this works really nicely for airflow. You can also see from the side on view uh, that longer power supplies will fit here absolutely fantastic and a front cutout in the tray will allow for uh, longer radiators to be used at the front which is great to see. At the rear of the case you can mount up to a 120 or 140 millimeter fan or radiator uh, which helps to continue this case's trend of good mounting options. In terms of build quality, this case is big as I've mentioned, but built like a beast. There's virtually no flex in any of the panels, uh, even the windowed side panel, and the rest of the case is just pure metal. So I mean, 10 out of 10 for build quality here. One notable really cool thing about this case, which adds to thermal takes attention to detail, is what looks to be a design manufacturer record on the rear of the front panel. I could be wrong here, but it gives the model number of vision and year, month and day of release or manufacturer, which is just a really unique, nice touch to see. When looking at this case to possibly buy it, it really comes down to what you need, more so than in other situations. If you're looking for a super small MATX case, this isn't the option, but if you want a good cube case with decent water cooling support, great build quality, a decent IO and design, and also good drive mounting and expansion capabilities on that MATX form factor, this may well be the perfect case for you. When scripting this review initially, I wrote this exact line. This is my favorite MATX case I've ever used. Unfortunately, I recently got in the Master Case 3 for a server build, viewable in the card section now, and that has since stole that title. Sorry, thermal take. Don't let that take away from this case though, too much at least. It's a well thought out MATX case, even if it is on the rather large side. But that about wraps it up for my review of Thermal Takes Core V21 cubed and not so small case. If you enjoyed this slightly different style, more short form review content, do let me know in the comments section below. Subscribe for more content from me, follow me on Twitter, it is at GeekerWatt. And as always, though, we'll see you in the next GeekerWatt video.